Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend. Uh, this game is starting to really look like the pink and green show. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to become very concerned that our fight with Red is a distraction from the real dangers here. So we need to get in contact with Green. I think that's very important because I need to be able to see them on the scoreboard. Um, oh, additionally, before I get really into doing the stuff of the episode, I want to talk about this. Um, somebody pointed out in the comments, uh, correctly, that it does not take very many boarding vessels, even bad boarding vessels, and boarding vessels are generally considered to be pretty bad uh, ships relative to combat in the first place. Uh, it doesn't take that many boarding vessels to kill a bunch of transport ships, uh, regardless of the units that are in them. And that's true. Um, I thought about when they were sending ships over, just trying to pound out a couple of boarding vessels real fast. And what are we, what are we looking at here? 188 industry. So we would make one in uh, in one turn about half the time. You know, whenever there's whenever there's overflow, we can we can reliably produce. Uh, boarding vessels fairly quickly but my concern with using boarding vessels to ward off their armies um, coming in over the ocean is that the boarding vessels would after doing that just get wrecked by the uh, by the huge number of vores that I assume are garrisoned in these fortresses whereas our land army after fighting their uh, their land units off can just go on and keep doing stuff um, so I didn't I didn't build boats to fight off their transports because I figured that we would not get long-term benefit out of doing so, but maybe I'm not right about that. It's totally possible that these fortresses are empty, um, and that all of their good combat ships are already being employed over in this theater. I tend to assume that the AI has effectively infinite units because, I mean, in practice, that, is, that has been how things work. Um, if you are playing on a lower difficulty level, you do not necessarily need to assume that. It is only the case on, like, impossible and endless, I think, because uh, the thing that allows them to maintain the, build the huge standing army in the first place and then also maintain it is the huge amount of free resources that they get. So I think we do want to, uh, I think we do want to push back and handle this with our land units. It's also worth noting that um, fighting the dudes in the sea gets XP on ships, whereas fighting their guys on land gets XP for our heroes in our cities, provided you know, that our heroes survive the battles. We're back up to full strength here. Uh, back up to full fortification on both of the cities. I don't know. This, these guys are going to make landfall next turn. These guys have six move, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, these guys are also going to make landfall next turn. So if we were going to try the boat thing, we probably would have had to start a few turns ago. And like I say, I'm confident that uh, I'm confident that the boats would have been destroyed uh, immediately after. Okay, so he's just letting us know that he has no intention of uh, of giving up just because we took a city. So what does he have here? He has. Ice Warg 456, this army is significantly more out of date. He does have an Ice Warg 5 here. But really, we just, we gotta get back and fend off this, uh, this push. It is unfortunate that the AI gets to maintain an infinite-sized army, um, basically without penalty, because it makes it so much harder to, like, not harder, but more tedious, I guess, to push forward. And, and we've seen that in a number of uh, a number of our wars. So I'm trying to figure this out. I want to attack these guys. Hey, that's a strategic boost facility. Neat. This would be a really nice uh, fortress to have. I don't care about emeralds very much. But Hyperium, Mithrite, and Titanium in the same region with a strategic boost facility is beautiful. Um, I think his ships are far enough away that we might be able to take this on our turn, right at the beginning of our turn, and then he'd have to decide between taking it back and trying to pursue us, because he can't attack us and the fortress in the same uh, turn. He only has one action point. What's the weather around here look like? Okay, so everything moves two spaces to the right each turn. 
Um, we might be able to use this big bunch of turbulent spaces to escape. It's a shame we can't be like here or here safely. Obviously, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't survive a lightning strike. Hmm. Well, I don't think there's really much for it. We got to return to the. Uh, we're going to return to the defense of our cities. So let us pull up. I really am pleased that we built these two cities so close together, by the way. It's been very helpful. So let us just pull up over here. So I need to... <clears throat> I need to command this group of ships to attack this fortress first thing, and then we also have to hit this. Actually, I'm going to hit this as soon as it lights up, and then we command the attack. So let's, let's select the boats. Oh, and then my camera jumps all over the place for no reason. How did I do it before they moved in? I did not. Well, hold on. Now that that's committed, though, we can, uh, we can pay attention to this. Okay. Uh, it seems to think... It measures the strength of your main army against the main army of the enemy, which is why it's like this. We are going to get completely routed by those boars. Well, I tried. Alright, so they're sieging our cities. And we are fighting back. Uh, 273. It's interesting that the Ice Warg 6... Weren't there... Oh, I guess there weren't any here. I was going to say, it's interesting that the Ice Warg 6 has so much less health, but I guess it's uh, probably not the case. Okay, so this guy's going to move first. He's going to kill my Ice Warg unless I position him in a pretty unusual way. Actually, with 5 move, he can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... So I could, like, fall back to here... But we can't get everybody out of harm's way. So should I allow the ice work to get killed in order to keep an archer off? Yeah, the fact that even five moves is enough to move three spaces even in heavily forested terrain. Um, it's a real problem for me. This means I'm just yielding these city spaces, which would give us a morale bonus. But uh, I think that I don't really have an option. This way, though, we can avoid getting attacked by the second group here. Um, for, mo for the first turn, at least. These guys only have five moves, right? Okay, yeah. And then this Mastermind is one of the really low damage ones. I kind of want my Ice Warg to hit. His damage is so high. But I think we're going to put an Archer in front, and we're just going to accept the death. Do I have... I didn't manage to merge that basic archer in. That would have been good, a good meat shield. Alright, well... I think this is my setup. He does how much damage? 94. So it's possible that we survive. I'm assuming his attack... Yeah, his attack is way higher than our defense. But he's not guaranteed to do damage in half. If he only does normal damage, which is the 80% result on his attack table, then our guy will survive for one turn. And our reinforcement slots are here and here, so... There's no sense in putting, like, a ton of effort into not getting hit, uh, not getting anybody hit, because somebody's gonna get hit. We can't make this uh, reinforcement slot unhittable. really important that everybody get off of the reinforcement slots if you are still alive and able to do so. Yeah, this is going to be a this is going to be a really important battle. Yeah. Um that's pretty good for us though. He chose to attack the basic archer instead of one of the better archers. So he removed a lot less power from our army than he uh, than he could have. He made a bad tactical decision there. Okay, it's one of the orgs who get to go before us died. Unfortunately, um, most of the orgs in the reinforcement army have higher initiative than we do. Okay, we got one good hit off. 
And here come those, uh, those buffed up masterminds, too. Alright, this guy is late in the turn. All those guys up, up front are late in the turn, right? Okay, this guy's an important target. But I do agree that we want to kill this one first. We can do a lot of damage to these guys as they come in. Uh, the militia need a path. So... You're early in the turn. You're, you have five move. You're going to go... You're going to pin this archer in place, probably. That would be my guess. This guy moves to here, hits this archer. Which is a shame, because I want this archer to move so that the militia can get through easily. Uh, that being the case... I don't know, I don't think that actually changes very much. We're still mostly just sitting, sitting still. You can move back. I want to make sure everybody's on a forest space to take advantage of our forest rage. Oh, well, never mind about this guy. Okay, here goes the hero. 264. Jesus. Alright, one down. We should be able to kill this guy, too, I hope. Come on, militia, you can do it. Oh, well, that militia can't. Okay, now, um, ice works are cavalry, and militia have bonus damage versus cavalry. So that will certainly be helpful. Nope, our militia are not going to get to kill that guy because they both got pinned. That's pretty bad for us, actually. Like, that's, um, that's real bad. Uh, you guys probably should focus up a little bit more. My suspicion is that we're not going to get to determine targets all that much. Okay, well, a trade. I'll take that. That was an interesting move. Alright, um, so what, we still have one of them who is moving before everybody. And then another one who moves before most of my units. And we cannot realistically kill either of these guys this turn, probably. But we can kill you. I'm going to put all of my... Wow, my very few range units, very few remaining range units, on killing this guy. Try to make sure everybody's in a forest, to take advantage of forest rage, and also, you know, the, uh, the defensive benefit of forest tiles. Okay, 59, that's not too bad. We definitely, um, had a rougher time here than we otherwise might have, due to the fact that um, our reinforcement slots got pinned shut so early. We end up fighting their entire army with just a portion of ours. Um, this is a good lesson, though. In case anybody didn't know about the importance of doing that thing, it is really important to do that thing. Uh, if, you can, if you can pin your opponent on the reinforcement slots, it is often extremely valuable to do so. off. Good stuff. So they only have one warg left. Oh, I should check out this drider. We don't know anything about this drider. We never got to see its stats. We, the first time we saw it was in a transport ship. Okay, so it has 73 damage. 77 attack. It looks pretty bad, but it has a lot of health. Alright, uh, yeah. Everybody who lives should attack the warg. Once the warg is dead, most of their offensive capability is too. Okay. They have uh, Masterminds casting Bloodlust on the last turn, which is a 
strategy of dubious value. So are all the wargs, all of the wargs in both of their armies combined are dead. Good, good, good. Uh, Renard doesn't get defenders? Okay, well, it's got to do with the way the sieges are. take these level ups real quick just so that I don't uh, don't forget so I mean there's definitely value in getting XP on your governing heroes okay uh, the mastermind six has 87 damage this guy has 54 this guy has 45 and we have 150 points of fortification to work with here I think we should be able to win this So we focus on this guy. Yeah. And we start inside the city, right? You have three move and three range. So he's going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. So actually, I could start both of my guys out of his range. And then move into range and one, two, three. We have to start here, I think, for both of us to be out of range. I don't know why you would choose to focus on the Drider. It's definitely not the most important target. Oh, the Wildwalker hero doesn't have four range. I'm so used to all of my units having four range. Okay, so now he's been stunned. Um, the Drider healing ability, Cocoon, stuns a friendly unit and increases its defense by 100% while healing it. So... Don't want to change up my target for this round. Do we want to burn the Drider down? I mean, we can't burn the Drider down. It has 172 health. Uh, this guy, I guess? I mean, we can still just shoot at him. Yeah, let's still just shoot at him. His defense is higher. So we'll, uh, we'll take lower damage, but I think it's worth it. Are the Driders just going to heal him again? And that time it didn't apply a one-turn stun to him for some reason. Which seems maybe broken. Oh no, it did. It just doesn't show on his unit card. That's weird. It definitely should show on his unit card. Is this battle really... just gonna, Okay. Apparently nothing is going to happen during this fight. Also, apparently, I had the wrong scene set here, so let's uh, fix that real quick. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. All right, now maybe we th now maybe the actual battle can begin. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not uh, I'm not terribly worried. Obviously, they keep bloodlusting each other and doing damage to each other. This guy literally can't move in on us, I think, because um, he can't path through the city. I guess he could move this way. He is choosing not to come around on us. Also, wait, I thought I had 150 points of fortification. How come did I miss that guy getting an attack earlier? I'm pretty sure I didn't. Oh, I don't have an action point. Okay. Uh, no, my unit does not actually have the ability to move. We're stuck inside the siege wall. Well, it is a completely absurd that... Uh, and see, now this time, the governor died in battle, and he last standed and didn't, didn't actually get removed from combat. But it so often doesn't work that way, and I do not fully understand uh, why. I don't remember if... We should have been watching. I had so much stuff going on. This could be Pink's army. Boy, I hope this is Pink's army. Pink did have an army over here. Oh, 
Well. Alright, so we want to launch the first attack on this turn. We can remove we can break the siege of Gadak with an attack, and then Gadak will be able to assist Renar in future battles. So this did not go well for Red. I hope that that is the conclusion that everybody is drawing. I guess I was going to run over here, but we don't even have any ships over here. Um, there's nothing we can do. We're going to lose all of our oceans. Red has ships, and we can't fight them. Renar has no action point left, despite having engaged in no kind of anything. It's, uh, not correct. Renar can't participate because it's under siege. But I don't, I don't understand why the game is saying no action point left. It's strange. Alright, uh, here we have the initiative advantage, so we want to just get right up on him. Okay, they're not even bringing in reinforcements. This should be pretty fast. Okay, there we go. Alright. Now, uh, <clears throat> now they cannot attack Renar because they will die. We can actually start building stuff properly in this city again. Okay, so Red has been driven off, and it looks like that was, in fact, a pink army. Pink will push Red off of Frida, so it looks like we have stabilized with one of Red's territories. Unfortunately, it's likely that Pink is now going to be able to uh, push forward and take everything to the west of us, which is bad because it looks like Pink is already in a very good position. Well, we built up some Palladian before we lost all of our ocean stuff, so that's good for us. Yeah. Uh, so this is one guy with initiative and one guy without. This is the dude who has initiative. He has one, two, three. One, two, three. So we want to be one space further back from him. And this time, both of my units actually do have um, four range. Okay, easy. This guy poses very little threat, although he could he could send my hero back to last stand. I think that's the only the only negative outcome we could see here. All right, and again, this is all just great um, great XP for our governors. All right, now generally speaking. Um, the areas that you start in tend to be pretty poor strategic resource-wise. I'm not sure if that's just um, the math or if that's a thing that the game does on purpose. Like, if it, if it makes player starting regions less likely to have late uh, strategic resources. Um, I guess we may as well run these dudes out into the army. There's no reason for them to just sit around. Um, but the fact that we took a thing that was closer to an AI starting region hopefully will make it a little bit easier for us to um, a little bit easier for us to take advantage of the later strategics especially since we're losing our sources of them so do I want to start building around here in preparation for the cargo dock how close am I to the next era okay pretty close the cargo dock is going to be an early research in there not first but close uh, two turns until Imperial Coinage, which will be very helpful. And then also we can trade the Imperial Coinage to other people. Uh, because we want them to use the market. The other option we have is producing ships or basic archers. I think we may want to do this. That's weird. It flashed another number for a second, and then was right back to plus 47. Okay. Um, th this is the third winter, isn't it? Yeah. So we do have access to the special types, the special districts. 
So we could um, you go know, intensifier, burrow, burrow, um, cargo dock, and I think that that would only require like one or two more. Uh, I can never remember if the initial district takes up the first two population. Because we need two population per borough. So this is two, this is two, this is two. But I don't remember if the if the city center counts. I don't know if we need six or eight. I think we need six population to do this. So we're actually almost there. The city's approval rating will dip, which will have an effect on national approval, but I don't think it will be enough to matter. Why are we still... 64? Is there a winter... Nope. Why are we at 64? Oh, right, the fourth city is why. We have a city that has bombed out approval because of um, us not having ownership of it. Fair enough. Yeah, let's start building. We're gonna we're gonna see our happiness drop a little bit. It's uh, unavoidable. We probably want to just go ahead and pick up strategic intensifier. We know we're going to use it. And the capital is going to have to put one down on the titanium. We need it really badly. In fact, that is... Really? Yeah, I guess the cost of this is over three times the cost of the borough. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Waiting for troops to get built. Should we switch Frida over to... The production of archers or... I kind of just want money. I want to make uh, I want to make another couple of governor purchases. I'm not too worried about them right away here. All right, we have repelled red. Hopefully, we can uh, we can get in on this. I have no idea how the war is going. I have to imagine pink is beating red though. And the sharing is going to be very helpful for us in. Oh, here's some pink troops coming. What? Oh, we're black spotted, aren't we? I was gonna say, I thought we had peace. But yeah, we're black spotted. Well. Did he seriously run back from the front of the war to attack me? Ah, uh, that's really annoying. How much would black spot nullification be? Hate black spot. No, 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 no. You're never getting a deal like that again. Alright, well, I'm gonna pay this. Make it harder for Pink's army to turn around and finish the job next turn. <sighs> well, that was Pink declaring in no uncertain terms that they do not expect us to take any more of Red's territory. Seems like he maybe doesn't know about this. Okay, pretty poor resources. Um, he clearly does know about that. Ah, uh, yeah, there's no way we can... There's basically no way to fight an AI Navy. Um, you have to devote your entire civilization to naval production. They they get so many uh, fire ships so quickly. There's very, very little you can do about it. It's kind of frustrating how difficult it is to, um, to play the naval part of the game. Okay, we're early enough in the game that this is actually um, potentially meaningful. So we want the Watchman's Pelt. I'm pretty sure that we have to kill the Herna army for this. Let's get in here and try to find this Herna army. Wow, yeah, Pink has a uh, Pink has a large, significant force. Oh, what are the what's the new minor faction that we got? We got some more Geldaris. So we are now at four Geldaris villages. So plus twenty percent damage. That is extremely significant. Conflict Resolution is the quest that is glowing here. Huh. That's weird.
All right. Uh, ordinarily, I go for dust refinery like right away. Our dust is actually in a really good place. I think I'm gonna do cargo docks. Uh, we could really use the industry. There's also this to pick up, but um, I want car I want cargo docks like now. Well, no, I probably want. We already have some palladium built up. Where are the resources? Here and here. Okay, so nowhere near where we built our cities, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping we might be able to get a strategic intensifier up. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Fred is nowhere near the coast. It would take two burrows to get out to the coast, so they could take advantage of the cargo docks too, I guess. Um, obviously, this is unacceptable for district or for regions. And we're gonna we're gonna get starved out of the game by pink if we don't do something. But because they surround us, war against them is going to be difficult. And unfortunately, uh, red is not out of the game, I'm sure, and is unlikely to end up out of the game. We should probably get smelting station first. We need to get our resource mining up, but it's a bummer for sure. Okay. Also, let's have a quick look at the marketplace. Heroes are going to be 650 ish by the time we can afford one. That's fine, we're coming up on it quickly. Are there any luxuries? No, not really. It costs 25 for us to pop a booster. And we don't have a lot of spare anything sitting around. Yeah. We're going to have to make some deals so that the AI can uh, sell their stuff to the market. So, for us, the most important thing is the maintenance of this. I would really like to be able to get to like here, 320, is that feasible? We have eight turns left, we're going to make less than 160, um, so I'd have to assign some people to influence and make no deals. So no, it's not really feasible. But trusting, you're an asshole. Uh, let's see if we can do some uh, tech exchange though. Because I have this incredible thing to tell you about. It's called Imperial Coinage. Oh, they're willing to give us some, some like real tech for this. We get smelting station right now. Straight up. This is <laughs> this is beneficial to us in both on both sides. Do you have any cool resources you would sell me? You don't want me to have your grass silk. Like really don't. You have twenty dust orchid. I have Six. If we got 19 of his Dust Orchid away from him, we could pop a Dust Orchid booster. And uh, that's a pretty good booster. I don't think that it's really feasible, though. We could give him some glass steel. Like, what if I... Let's, let's try to price this out. Let's see what we could do here. What is that, like 50? Oh, like 40? That's 122 of my influence. It gets, it gives him marketplace access so he can start selling resources for us to buy. It gets me a current and extremely relevant tech. And it gets me a booster that's like really valuable. Yeah, I think there's no, there's no good reason not to do this. Now we just got to figure out what our empire plan is actually going to look like. We might have to fall back to like this thing. So... I'm going to pop this right now. Yay, happy. Um, 18 influence per turn for 8 turns is uh, 144. So if we just stay the course, we get there. Just barely. All right, let's do that. Uh, and then I guess we're done with this turn. This was a, a good turn. Productive. Now we do cargo docks. And that's really important. In fact, it's more important than this. And Gaddock is the other place where our uh, industry is pretty good, so I'm happy about the way that that worked out. Okay. And grass silk is not a terrible resource. It's not one of the really great ones. This is the tier of luxury resources that has both, both Moonleaf and Titan Bone on it, so those are the things you're hoping to see. But grass silk's not useless, and it uh, it does uh, trade 
just as well as the other resources. I think the AI values all of the tier two luxuries at about the same. Okay, so unfortunately, right now we're basically a protectorate state. Like, pink is actually the boss. I don't like that. Okay, I want to kill that Herda's army. No, don't you kill them. I want those guys. Oh, you monster. If you kill the Herda's army, you get a uh, you get a chest armor piece that's pretty valuable. Boo. Okay, well, we did pick up another source of titanium, so that's good. Do we have an extractor here already? Yes, okay, they had built the extractor. Alright, let's have a look at our new territory. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess we can start mining emeralds. So we're basically out of this war. It's got pretty okay outputs. Food's a little bit low, but it does have a husbandry center, so we can fix that manually. Yeah, on the whole, not bad territory. Uh, we are going to need to... Uh, we're going to need to meet the other players still. We have open borders with pink, so we could send something through. I could also... Can we negotiate a vision exchange? Okay, they're not hugely opposed to it. Out of curiosity. Okay, they consider both of these things to be negative. Alright, that's something to think about for the future, uh, Vision Exchange. But let's focus on infrastructure stuff while we wait to see how the war with Red pans out. We do want to keep an eye on that, though. Okay, we just want to make sure that they remain at war with, uh, with Pink. And we'll keep taking their temperature as far as a truce goes. Um, we scored big diplomatic points with Pink, though, by having a common enemy fighting them, killing some of their guys, taking one of their cities. So that's high value for us. Um, and then we want to search this ruin real quick. We have some kind of message, which I will check in a second. Alright, I don't want to hang out in their territory because they don't like that, but I did want to search that. Alright. Well, we get a hero this turn. We should go and um, reveal the rest of our tiles. We should know everything that's in our region. Okay, he's now fatigued. Somebody has 4,000 dust in the bank. Somebody that we don't know. Green. Okay, yeah. This this game's going to come down to green versus red, I think. It's unfortunate for us. Because I'm neither of those people. Alright. Um, we would like to get the Alchemic Institute. And it would slot in right here very comfortably. I don't suppose there's any way that there's, uh... Oh! My suspicion is that these resources have cratered because of, uh, red. Or, uh, because of, uh, pink, rather. So we actually do have the ability to purchase a lot of resources. How, how expensive is adamantium? Adamantium is one... Wow, 17.3. That's not bad at all. We can buy 25 adamantium right now. And go for the alchemical ins of the alchemic institute. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Uh, just slap that down right there. It'll complete the uh, the level twoing of our megapole, and it's gonna be beautiful. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else do we need to do? Honestly. Things have calmed down a lot. I think the answer might be not that much. I'd really love to have all this stuff back. Unfortunately, any ship that we build is probably going to get scuttled pretty quickly. Um, but we, we probably are going to have to build a scout ship and just try to, try to figure out a way to keep it free of uh, Red's interference. Alright, well we got another ruin here. Didn't find anything, but we did get a level out of it. Okay, we just moved into that era. There was Seagos coming along. So he's going to be the one who makes the boat, right? Yeah, this, this city has a little bit of a... Has a moment of free time. 
So, his city center is in kind of an awkward place. I don't know if this will count as a new city, because we got it after the quest, or if we have to found a city in order for it to count for this quest. Okay. The weather, the weather is being messed with. So it may be the case that we uh, we can get our quest done by just building two burrows here and here. Um, the city is currently at its maximum number of burrows, but we can fix that with a uh, with a few turns of dedication to food, since we have the husbandry center here. Okay. Yeah, let's build the intensifier. Not that I particularly need more glass steel, but it has been valuable to us um, for trade. Actually, let's put this up first. Now, we're running pretty low on pearls, and I'd like to get, um, at the very least, the Abbey of Anomalies as well. We have a decent anomaly we can build it on right here. Uh, God, I could reach out and grab the Mycordia. Does Renar have... Yeah, Renar has an anomaly that's already adjacent to it. That's a pretty okay one. It's a lot of food. I did not realize that that was an oasis. It's strange considering that we're like in a heavily forested region. Alright, uh, yeah, we need a scout boat. We gotta get... Okay, both of my armies are in fact out of move. Still haven't fixed that bug yet. Alright, I'm assuming we can't afford a hero this turn. Yeah, we're gonna need one more turn. And we need two hero. We need two governors, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, things are going alright. Uh, five turns on that. I bet we'll get this. I feel pretty, pretty confident there. And I guess we're just waiting. We're just doing economics for a little bit. After Frida gets its, um, gets its alchemy workshop up, we will... Actually, I guess I'm not in a real rush. We can just push to food. Oh no, I had everybody on here on dust because that's, this is how I was buying my, uh, my heroes. That's right. Well, we can probably change that. So, influence boost 2. Dust efficiency is not bad. Dust boost. Dust boost 3. Um, slavery is... Being attacked. Oh, no. I'll deal with it in a second. Um, so, Queen Slayer has access to slavery. The slavery trait gives plus food and plus industry for each pacified village in the region. This might be the way we go. In, in the region that we're uh, of our new city, this is food efficiency 2 and industry efficiency 2. This is pretty good. What what is what is attack? What is happening? Oh, my boarding vessel was in the world for a tenth of a turn before I got This is what I was talking about. Uh, we don't see garrisons with the sharing, but both of these fortresses 100% for sure have full garrisons, because the AI always has full garrisons. Alright, let's build a cargo dock. Get us a little bit of uh, free approval, plus, you know, industry. The approval will push Gaddock back up to Fervent, which is nice. What is the shape of Gadak right now? It's just got one extra thing up. So we can build um, Abbey and then two burrows and triangle like this. We get a nice approval positive shape. And that doesn't require very much population. So we definitely need to find a bunch of pearls because we need to purchase the Abbey of Anomalies um, design for ten pearl or for twenty pearls, and then we need enough pearls to build a few of them. So what if I 
I, I didn't actually buy that here. I went, I went to check what was going on. Why don't we go ahead and buy Queen Slayer? I like... I, I'm always hesitant to say things like, I like slavery for this region. But I think it'll be okay. Um, do I want to pull, like... Trying to figure out where where I want to put people back on uh, dust because I want to have want to have good dust going for a while. I guess it can be Gothic for a while. Yeah, we want to make sure that we get that second hero. All right, uh, let's bring down our expansion disapproval. We do have some. On the whole, the game's not going too poorly. I'm just worried that uh, over the long term we're going to lose. So I guess in that sense, it's not going that well. Do I want to try to just run my army through neutral territory to see stuff? Also, this is maybe... We should see what that is. Okay, that is a pink army. It is fire ships. Pink has a dock and immediately produced five fire ships. Because that is how the AI rolls on the water. Okay. How are we doing on our resource mining? It's coming along slowly. We should check the luxury market. I think I want to push my army this way. I'd like to see what red has left. Full garrisons everywhere, always. Alright, uh... It didn't really matter whether we mashed the move button this turn, because this guy had enough move to follow us. This turn, it looks like maybe not. Because he hasn't used all of his move yet for some reason. Oh no, he had to use all of his move to... No, I, I should have been mashing it. We would have gotten away. Never mind. Uh, Alright, so we need Frida to hit 14 population in order to build our uh, districts out around it. What's up? Cold War. Great. Well, but we need 160 to maintain the uh, the Empire plan, the minimum acceptable Empire plan. Let's see if we can negotiate them back to peace. Peace is beneficial for them, but they don't really agree. Well, we can trade them like boarding vessel, which is going to have no value to them, but we're going to have to build up some influence to do it. So do I want to just charge into their territory? Now that we're not at peace anymore, they could attack us in their territory. I really want to have more information about what's going on with Red, but I don't think I'm going to risk it. Not to mention, you know, a minor international incident. And we're going to work hard on um, upgrading Galax city center and stuff in the hopes that maybe this will just mean not our capital. It's totally possible. We're going to move away from Red's Navy. Alright, let's just buy the, uh, let's just buy the Crummy Empire plan. We'll deal. I think we got extremely good value out of the, uh, the spending of our influence that prevented us from buying a better Empire plan. I'm not upset about it. Alright, so we're about to finish another legendary building. We're going to have a level 2 um, industrial megapole. This city is going to be fervent. This is going to remain fervent, I mean. This city is about to go back into fervency. This city could use some help. It'll get better as we complete the shape, though. Alright, so that's what you're doing for the next while. How's Frida? Frida's only happy. 
And it looks like it already has a market and everything. Yeah. Okay, now we haven't actually taken advantage of our apprenticeship registry or our lumber mill because we've been very busy. And we've had a lot of things to do with our influence, or a lot of things to do with our titanium, rather. But we're getting it in at a rate of three per turn now. So we should be able to actually start building some of these buildings. Alright, the deal we want to make with pink is going to cost us... You can probably get something from them too, right? If, what do they want most? They want management sciences. Ordinarily, I'm a little nervous about giving them good tech, but it um, doesn't matter much here. Because he definitely already has effectively infinite industry. Otherwise, he wouldn't he wouldn't have been able to pump out eight fire ships over the course of three turns. So we can't get a good tech from him. And we can't really get anything else from him. Oh, we can probably throw on some. Oh, you can't you can't throw on additional treaties that are reliant on peace. I would love to trade like peace and commercial agreement and vision exchange or map exchange. Uh, this is gonna be too expensive influence wise. We could just give him this deal or or if not management sciences something like that. And, uh, take advantage of the... Really, he's already back to dismissive. He doesn't even remember the common enemy thing anymore. And... Basically, we need a lot more influence. So we're probably going to want to pick up public works. Now, remember, we do have... Uh, where is it? We do have... This thing. So we are getting a little bit of influence every now and then. Which is why we have 46 influence right now instead of the almost nothing remaining that we had originally budgeted for. Uh, it's interesting that Red is completely ignoring Pink's Navy to focus solely on me. Not unexpected, because the, uh, the AI will always fight the player over another AI. Which I'm assuming is a balancing measure, but is frustrating in the moment for certain. Well, I think we're probably going to get wrecked here, because I think these uh, these aid fire ships are going to turn around and hit us. Oh my god, the extreme, the extreme seaweed weather is <laughs> very silly. Alright, I'm trying to find out if Red has more territory. I mean, we know Red has more territory. I'm trying to figure out where. Alright, so Tonto Mosipakwa gets a level because he uh, his city finished a legendary building. That's very good for your confidence as an engineer. Really, we don't have an alchemy workshop yet. Man. And we definitely want to build a cargo dock. I don't think it really matters where. I guess if we build it here, it makes it easy to level up the strategic intensifier, and we would get, I think, an extra 10 science out of it. We just build a district here afterward. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be helpful uh, for our research. Everybody else is doing what everybody else needs to do. Next turn, we'll be able to buy our final governor. Well, our next governor. No, it looks like uh, the prices have risen too quickly. So it's going to be two turns, probably. And we're at 70... Oh, it was like 92. 114. Do I want to move some people to influence or something? Yeah, I can afford to do that. Okay. Let's try to get some uh, let's try to get some treaties and stuff going here. Friendship with Pink has been very valuable so far. I'm assuming that Red is living on an island somewhere. Well, here's another fortress, so we're about to get attacked. The Dust Orchid ran out, which is a shame. Okay, we need... Here, and here. And then we need to, uh... 
We need to get together the pearls for the Abbey of Anomalies. We need one more turn of high influence production. How much, how much space here is actually forested? Quite a lot of it. So the difference between the apprenticeship registry and the lumber mill is basically just that the lumber mill is worse, always worse, but after you build your apprenticeship registry, you still sometimes want one. All right, this turn we should be able to make, a make our deal with Pink. I think I'm just gonna give them pretty favorable terms. Uh, there is a diplomatic modifier for contracts to the AI's advantage. We might be able to make some long-term friendships here. Oh, I wanna steal this. Oh, I'm stealing this. Screw you, Red. Temporarily, very temporarily, break control of your fortress. And this is how many pearls? Eight. Nice. That'll be very helpful. Okay, hey, what's up, man? Do you want to give me... Look at me, fire ship. Or actually, they've they've warmed up on this deal. They consider it more favorable now. They weren't willing to give me tier 2 tax before. Or era 2 tax before. Um, public granary would actually be lovely. How much does that make? That makes the deal 184. We can do it next turn. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, friendship. Beneficial to everybody. Except for red. Which is fine. Screw them. Alright, so we get a little bit more free dust orchid production. Scout ship has already been worth its weight in gold. Okay, here's some red land. Or maybe just the quarter of another sea region. Also blue, which I don't think I don't think we've seen any blue territory in quite a while. Their valuation of the deal keeps changing. I don't really want to take either of the Era 1 techs that they have available. Why does their valuation of the deal keep changing? I don't understand. I'm going to take 25 wine from them. There. Contract to your advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's pop this. Okay, and they have successfully murdered my ship, but... It got me a couple of Dust Orchid and eight Pearls. And some information. And it broke up Red Sea Region temporarily, which is good, you know, for spite. Alright, another winter is going to be pretty soon. When it hits, we got to scramble and make sure we get all of our Pearls. Um, now that we've got peace with Pink... Oh, now we're Blood Brothers. Now he remembers the common enemy. Um, how negative are you on, like, that? Pretty negative. Research agreement, though, was not doesn't look like it would be hard to get to. And actually, I don't want a map and vision exchange. I just want a map exchange. So we could do this, right? We could do like that. Is there anything he would take that isn't a tech? Well, I'm not giving him my pearls. Oh, I want to trade him this listening post so much. We can do this deal right now. This listening post that we just took, it's going to be... Red's going to take it back anyway. Yeah, let's do this. We'll get the contract to his advantage modifier improved. And we'll, uh, we'll get the maps we wanted. I'd like to get a little bit more out of it. A research agreement would be nice. But I don't know that we have the time for that, right? Because that deal would be 117. We won't get there next turn, and we'll lose the listening post by then. So let's just take this deal. Okay, let's have a look. So we now we get to know what blue is. Blue is Broken Lords, I think? That's what this architecture is. Um, and we know that green is really taking over the world. And red does not have much in the way of sea knowledge. 
We know the blue has some land over here. This could be an island, or it could be that the the continent kind of does this thing. So I bet red's on an island up here, and that's their final remaining territory. That's unfortunate. Their complete control of the sea is going to make it actually very difficult for us to get over there. All right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce out into pink territory. Actually, let's not take everybody. Let's leave behind the Ice Warg. And the reason I'm doing this is that he can, um... He can scramble around our territory grabbing stuff, uh, grabbing pearls when, winter's, when winter begins. And it's the Warg instead of the Archers because he's the fastest. Alright, let's go get some, uh, get some ruins. I like that play a lot. I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. Okay, Renar is about to have like a crazy amount of industry. Oh, and we could have purchased our uh, governor that turn. I got all distracted. So who looks good? We do have an influence boost hero available. Dust efficiency 2 is fine. I think we might end up going for that influence boost. And I think we're going to move Tlato Mosi Pakwa out of this city. I think we're going to have Andom come in here. We could have put Andom in Frida as well. But I think we're going to put him in the capital. And this is going to be your new home. Okay. So what now? Well, I guess we can do like I said and uh, just keep leveling stuff up. Keep grabbing more tiles, getting more resources. Alright. Level up the district or city center of Gadak to get uncommon alloys. Wow. Nice. Uh, how c We're pretty close on that, right? Yeah, really, I just want to buy, uh, I want to buy Abbey of Anomalies and build that. That's pretty good. Late Ruin Searching. It's, uh, very valuable. It's like a relevant tech and everything. Alright, let's put this off the, on the list next. I guess we could start getting the Grass Silk. What is the value of our trade routes? Okay, 88 Science is, uh, is pretty good. I'm assuming these are all trade routes with pink. Uh, no, actually, we're trading with Frida quite a bit. The population, population and dis distance are the things that matter for trade routes. So, like, the route from Brahma to Frida is pretty long, and Frida's population is pretty good, so. Unfortunately, the ruins in Pink's territory are a little more sparse than I would like. I can't believe we're sitting here hoping for winter. Alright, Frida has a has enough population to put up another district, which it will do very slowly. But that's, once we get to 14 pop, or at least close, we'll move everybody to industry. And this is going to help. Alright, come on, another great ruin result. Nope, okay, that's fine. Uh, all right. Well, everybody's doing important stuff. I think we're basically good. How long is it going to take you to... Okay, in seven turns, the city will, uh, will be population positive. And the National Museum is starting to look really good for us. We have a lot of districts and whatnot in this city. So, I think, unfortunately, that is going to have to be it for this episode. It looks like pink is wrecking red on the ocean pretty solidly, but to be fair... This is an area that's far from Red's territory. I think I probably actually want to get a ship out. We should check to see if these regions actually do have full garrisons, because we might be able to reclaim some of this. So come back next time. We are going to tentatively prod around and see what we can reclaim on the ocean. And we'll see you then.